In God we trust, all others must bring data. This awesome quote from Edward Deming just confirms how important data is these days. And there is no doubt that it is treated like gold by tech companies. While a lot of entrepreneurs understand the importance of data, it is still underestimated by the majority if it's not completely ignored. So today's video doesn't just act as a tutorial, but as well as a lessons to the importance of data and why you should definitely track your KPIs or to write it out, key performance indicators. Even if they look useless at first glance. I will go over a few key concepts on why you you should track data as well as how you can do that with your voice AI agents. I will provide you three different ways on how you can analyze and track those KPIs along with all of the prompts and everything I created directly in this video. As always with my channel I will give you access to all of those prompts and everything I created completely for free directly inside of my research hub so simply head over to hub.indicraticus.com get access to the template so you can follow me along the screen without doing anything. And if you're new to the channel my name is Yanis I run my own AI agency that helps businesses like yours to leverage AI voice calling so that you can get rid of all your manual phone calls and completely automate that process so that you can literally focus on what scales your business best. So let's talk a bit about why I see data is so important. For me it's mostly because it brings leverage in so many different ways. It helps you for example with understanding how well your AI voice assistant performs, where it gets stuck, where it fails, where it hallucinates. So thanks to data we can address those issues and increase performance and functionality and therefore passively increasing accuracy and finally the outcome. It also helps you to reduce costs and other bottlenecks such as loops that can basically keep your conversation alive forever. We also use it to analyze what the caller exactly looks for so that we can optimize the prompt and can get a better overall outcome. The list is endless but I hope this gives you a slight picture of why it is important to track your KPIs so that you can just optimize your voice assistants and make them better over time. Within my agency we often use advanced tracking to really get a deep understanding of what works and what doesn't so we can provide the best solutions for our clients. This is crucial and leads down to one thing that I want to specifically mention which is prompt engineering is not just a thing that you do once and that's it. No, it is an ongoing task that you do over and over again. You basically optimize your prompt along the way while you're building your voice agents and while you're actually using it. You can see it as a continuous process that you will do over time so that you can get the outcome you're looking for. Now with that out of the way, here are three ways on how you can track your KPIs. The probably easiest setup is by using VAPI's built-in analysis features. This allows you to create a custom summary of the conversation, a success evaluation, whether or not the assistant did its job, and lastly, to extract custom KPIs based on whatever you deem necessary for your assistant. To make sure you get a good understanding of it, let's look at an actual example. So here we have an AI customer chatbot that I literally just created by clicking on create assistant and using the customer support example. So there's not much change, I literally just gave it a different name, Lisa, which I'm always using for most of my chatbots. The rest is literally the exact same and if you would like to now make analysis on top of it directly inside of VAPI, all you would do is head over here to the analysis tab and there you have a couple of new settings. So the first one is the summary and don't confuse that with the actual summary, summary that VAPI creates because VAPI itself creates also a summary on top of that one which is also totally fine and we are using that in most of our transcripts and reports anyways. But in case you would like to have a custom summary all you need to do is you need to define a prompt here that basically just defines something or whatever you specifically look for inside of a summary which might even be a specific type of language, a specific type of formatting Whatever it is, you can define it right here. And as you can see here, they also give you a placeholder as example, which you can just use to kind of create your own one. But as I mentioned, this one is mostly then necessary if you really want something that is that doesn't fit or that isn't okay inside of the normal summary that VAPI creates. Now, if we are scrolling down a bit, you can find another point called success evaluation, which is nothing else than a definition of a specific value that is sent over that determines whether or not the conversation was successful in one way or the other. Other. And this usually depends on whatever you put inside of this prompt. By default, as you can see here, this is what I literally just copied. You are an expert call evaluator. You will be given a transcript of a call and the system prompt for an AI participant. Based on the objectives inferred from the system prompt, determine if the call was successful. And then you can define down here an evaluation rubric, which just is a specific value that is sent back inside of the response or inside of your, your logs that determines whether or not the conversation was successful. So I usually just use pass fail, which returns either true or false, depending on if the conversation was successful or not. And this usually depends on what I define as a goal. So by default, this prompt expects you to have the goal defined inside of the system prompt that you define inside the model over here, which by default is not the case if you usually create a prompt. Uh, I think here it is not defined. So if you have a goal defined inside of your system prompt, you can simply use that very simplified prompt right here. If you don't, you can literally just create that same goal inside of this prompt that you want to check for. 
So you would literally just go into here and you would say something like goal and then you can literally just define the goal that it should follow and you can adjust the prompt accordingly. This is another way of how you can basically just measure the success depending on what comes back, which I'm also gonna show you how this looks like in a second. Now lastly, if you scroll down a little more, you can also return structured data. And this is that we are using now intensively through VAPI because we have basically previously done it with another classifier, which I'm also gonna mention very soon. But for now, I'm just gonna show you how this looks visually with using VAPI's analysis tool. Cause all it does is it basically allows you to extract specific information from the conversation that we had with a user and you can get that information in a structured way so that you can reuse it inside of your API calls, webhooks, whatsoever and just save it to a custom logging system. And as you can see here, I defined a couple of major KPIs, which is the first call resolution, customer satisfaction, average, handle time, net promoter score, and lastly, the resolution time. And I just gave it a couple of more notations. Obviously, this prompt you will also find inside my resource hub, so you can simply download it if you would like to track the same or just use that as a template to create your very own ones. And as you can see here in the curly brackets, I also shortened the words, which I'm then using inside the data schema down here to map them against a value. And I do this because it just is faster, it returns me a shorter value, and it still kind of uses the same uh, notation. So as you can see here, we have NPS, we have RT, they're all literally defined in here. And if I click on one, you can also see that they have a definition, which is the definition that I have here within the importance. So this is literally just another definition so that VAPI basically knows which of the informations to return back to you. And while all of this looks good in theory, it looks better if you see it in a practical example. And what you would usually do is after you adjusted everything, you click on publish, you make a call, or you have someone else make a call and just try to track the metrics. And once you have done that, or once you had the call, you simply head over here in the menu to call logs, and you check directly inside your log for the analysis, which you can find here in a new tab. And if we're heading over it, you can see now that it basically defines a summary that we defined, it also shows you whether true or false, if the success evaluation was correct or not. In my case, it was false, which means my success, my case has not been solved. And right here, you can also see in the extracted data, which is the specific metrics that we would like to extract. We have a JSON formatted string that includes all of the values like net promoter score right here with the value low. And if we're heading back into the assistant, you can see as well in the analysis tab, that we basically for the net promoter score define it as high, medium or low. So those are the values we basically return. And exactly, so this is an example of how we are, or how I like to track the values directly inside of VAPI. And this is the visual way, and this is for static assistants. And you obviously know if you're following my channel that there are different types of assistants inside of VAPI. You have the static one, you have the transient based one or the dynamic assistant. And this is the static example. But let's say, how does this look like if you are actually using a dynamic assistant? Cause dynamic assistants again have a different notation. And I'm just, I prepared a little bit of something here so that we don't need to scroll from scratch and we don't need to go through the whole manuals to actually understand how you can add them into your transient based assistant. And for that, I'm heading over to this JSON editor right here where I'm already pasted one of those dynamic JSON constructs. And you will also find this one, by the way, inside of the resource hub so that you can take a look at it. Now, if we are scrolling down a little bit more here, you can find here a new key called analysis plan, which is on the exact main level of the assistant prompt, uh, of the assistant JSON. And in here, you can see the structured data prompt, which is the prompt that we are using to extract the information as structured data. Then you have the structured data schema, which is all of the single values that we just defined here, which here also defines as a string. Then the description, you see here NPS for the net promoter score, you see the description here, and again, like the string definition. So those are basically the values that we expect in the end of call report to be sent back. And down here, you can see the other two parts, which is the success evaluation prompt and the success evaluation rubric. You will have another field here for the summary, which you can also just get by either checking the API documentation, or if you want to get it in a simplified way, you can use what I've shown you in mostly all of my tutorials. There's a tool called Postman, and inside of Postman, you can literally just add your API endpoint, including the assistant ID that is defined inside of the assistant by scrolling up here. Then you make a get request to it, and you set as an authorization a bearer token, which is the API key that you find inside of your account. Once you've retrieved it, it will look something like this, and then you can just scroll down and you see all of your values. So those are the ones that you can work with directly inside of a transient-based assistant, so that you don't need to create them all from scratch, and you can literally just start with a predefined example that you've created statically inside of VAPI, 
and you then extract it using those kind of endpoints. So this is a way on how you can make it dynamic and how this looks like if you want to, for example, put it into some different platform or let's say you wanna use it inside of make.com. I've also prepared a small make.com example right here. As you can see, we have the custom webhook here and this basically goes to the end of call report and you can see as well, I'm gonna show you that directly in here. If we are basically going to the webhooks response, which is what basically came through previously, you can see that we have the end of call report, the call, and here we also have a new analysis tab, which is basically the information that we extracted during the transcript or after the transcript. And you can see here we have a custom summary, which is anyways created. We have as well the structured data and the success evaluation. And if you open the structured data, you can see that it shows you the exact values or the names of the variables that we set including the value inside of it. And as you can see, I'm adding all of this to a Google Sheet, which is over here. And you can see that we have the caller phone number, we have the phone ID, timestamp, ended reason, success evaluation, and so on. So basically all of the values are directly inside of this Google Sheet, tracked based on this transcript using this very simple automation right over here. This down here is just a placeholder for function calls. I just left it in there to make things a bit easier in case you wanna understand function calling a bit more. I have a full tutorial on that on my YouTube channel as well, so feel free to check that out. And all you do is you simply click on save down here once you have imported it, you will find it in the resource hub like I mentioned. Import by the way, down here, three dots, import blueprint, you import it here, you click save and you schedule it so that it is active for all of your incoming reports. That's all I got for the first example. Now let's head over to the second example, which is creating a custom prompt classifier. So now we are taking the custom approach and basically removing everything that has to do with WAPI and we literally just create everything on top of it with our very own logic platform or code, whatever it is that you're going to use. Because prompt classification just uses the input of an LLM to get a specific outcome and this is exactly what we are going to do. It is so versatile that you can implement it into mostly any kind of no-code slash local tools, such as make.com and Zapier, etc. You can implement it into a custom coded solution as well. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit more about the concept because if you have followed my channel for a while, you've already seen this in a, in a couple of my previous videos, but just to go over it, let's head over to the playground of OpenAI, which you can see here. And all I did is I basically created a system prompt that acts as a classifier, you can see here, you're an expert KPI classifier, your goal is to classify the following KPIs based on a given call transcript and in return, and then return them in JSON format. So we have the KPIs here, which is literally the exact same that I just used inside of my WAPI assistant down here for structured data. So it kind of works in a similar way. We literally just use that as the system prompt, as you can see here. And then down here, I have a little bit more added, which just defines the return format. So this is the format that we want to return the data in, which again is nothing else than the actual definition of those fields. Like in here, I didn't mention again the description because it is kind of self-explanatory because we have NPS here, we have NPS here. So it is kind of matchy and you know the values. So what I did then is I basically just added another line that says the JSON with classified data and no markdown. And this is basically what we expect as a response. And then you can see down here, I have a user message where I'm literally just adding the call transcript with a markdown title above it. So this is literally just the transcript that we got back from within WAPI, within the end of call report. And then once I run that, you can see that the assistant returns the JSON including all of the values that we wanted. So I can just remove that and I can just literally run the same thing again. So you see it's actually live. And you can see, boom, it basically just creates the JSON again. And then we have that information available, which we can then use in tools like make.com to turn from a JSON to an array. And then we can use and access the data inside of the make.com workflow and do with it whatever. And just, just as, a, as a small note, inside of make.com, what you would need to do is you add a new module, you open the OpenAI create a completion. And down here, you can literally just create a chat completion. You add your model, which in that case could be 4.0 and then you just add the messages. And it's literally the same setup what I just showed you. You basically have a system prompt, then you add the user information and then the assistant responds dynamically. And this is the information you then use inside uh, using the, the chase modules that you will also find by just selecting a new module or creating a new module and searching for JSON. And here you can see you have one that's called parse JSON, which you use to basically turn the JSON string into actual usable data inside of make.com. But this just as a small note. But yeah, this is basically all I have to add to the second part, which is just using LLMs to directly classify that information inside of a prompt that is completely independent of WAPI if you would like to have a more custom solution where you want to be more precise of the information you put inside of the prompt, which is something I usually appreciate because it just allows me to be more specific of the things that I'm extracting 
I can literally use my own wording instead of relying on something that Vapi creates, for example. And lastly, I would like to share with you a more sophisticated approach that makes a lot of sense if you want to analyze huge sets of data. The software we are going to use is not only there for tracking metrics, but it is actually a complete engine for you to understand what happens behind the scenes within your prompting and maybe even within your system prompts so that you can get a whole picture of what is going on behind the scenes. The tool is called Langfuse and it is so powerful that this video would definitely not be enough to cover everything it has to offer, but I wanted to make sure I mention it so that you have heard the name so far so that in case you're interested, I can make a complete tutorial about that specifically because it's gonna be very intense, but also super, super helpful, especially when you would really want to scale your agents. The tool is open source and I can definitely recommend you looking into it. The link for that is as well inside of my resource hub. So simply head over there, open it up and check it out. It is completely free. So I definitely recommend you to check it out so that you can get a better understanding of it in the first place. And if you would like me to make a complete tutorial about it, definitely drop me a message below in the comments. I'd be very happy to do so. Now, this tool is not only there for actually understanding of what happened happens inside of the complete transcript. Now it actually lets you as well test the whole prompts so you can basically implement specific prompts and test against them and see the outcome if those fill success metrics. So you can optimize the prompts itself within testing as well. You can also completely analyze each and every single message. You can run KPIs for every and each single message which is just incredibly powerful because it gives you score and then after you can analyze on top of those scores as well. What I mentioned so far are just a couple of those features that they actually offer as it's really that powerful. So this tool not only allows you to look into specific information from the conversations and the call transcripts you had, no, it actually allows you to analyze every single message with custom KPIs for each of those messages so you get a better overall understanding of how the assistant has performed. Again, you can also adjust that and extend that by actually analyzing your complete system prompts directly inside of Langfuse so that you can see and compare different kind of prompts how they perform and which ones work better than the others. There is a lot more you can do, so I definitely recommend you to just check it out as it's free. Anyways, you can set it up on your very own system and just give it a try. It is super powerful and we really use that for a lot of clients that stay with us, where we basically just help them to completely optimize their prompts in an ongoing manner to make sure everything works out to their best performance and basically that they have the best VAPI assistance available that they could get. So with everything I shared so far, I really hope this was helpful for you and you get a better understanding of why it is it's important to track your KPIs and why you should definitely look into it as well as for your clients if you have an agency. And all of what I just showed you so far is literally just scratching the surface. So if you would like to definitely see more in-depth content about that, feel free to drop me a message below and I'm looking into that. So that's all I have for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'm hoping to see you next time. Take care.